Hello everyone. Today's project is going to be cleaning up this Mazda Miata valve cover. This is from a 2002. One nice thing about the Mazda Miata, at least in this year, is that the valve cover has uh, small screws that are located underneath that hold these little baffle covers in place. And uh, because they have these screws, we're gonna I'm going to go ahead and remove these and I'm going to vapor blast the inside and the outside of it. Because we'll be able to get in all these nooks and crannies and get the blast media out of there. One thing that I recommend every time that you're dealing with any kind of threaded parts and uh, sandblasting or vapor blasting is to go ahead and 3D print yourself some little bolts. You could just set them back in place because it's not good to get blast media embedded in these threads. It's very hard to get out. Once it gets in there, especially the extra fine glass bead media, it's very small and it gets in there and it's hard to get out. And as you're putting your screws back in, you, you'll run into some problems. So I've already go, uh, gone ahead and 3D printed a bunch of these. I'll make sure to include all the STL files for all of these little uh, bolts in the description. That way, if you guys have a Mazda Miata this year, it might even work for other cars. You guys can just print these things up and save yourself some time. I'm going to start with the machine surfaces first. So th this part is already loose. I'm going to go ahead and take it off and show you. So these are the, the, the separate components. And I also 3D uh, printed a, a plug for here as well. I'll include that in the STL files in the description. Now, I'm not going to get blast media inside of this pipe. Um, so I'm just going to bolt it back together after I, I clean this machine surface. I, I don't want to have the risk of having any media trapped in there where I can't see. So I'm not going to get any media inside of these, any of these uh, tubes. Same thing with this. So there's a sensor that goes in here. I'm not going to get any blast media in there. I'm just going to cover that up once uh, once I, I degrease it. But this is the machine surface that I am going to vapor hone. So I'm going to blast this first with extra fine glass bead media because the extra fine glass bead is not going to take off any uh, material here on this machine surface. And also this, this one as well. So I'll go ahead and clean those up real quick with the extra fine glass bead. Then I'll either mask it off or reassemble the part and hit it with an 80 grit glass bead which will knock off all of this surface oxidation and grease and then we'll come back with extra fine again and polish it all up. So let me go ahead and uh, remove these baffles. We'll get it put inside the vapor blast cabinet and we'll start working on it. We're going to be blasting with extra fine glass bead media, only the machine surfaces and the inside as well. We'll be blasting using the version 3 vapor blast gun. I'm almost done with the testing on it. The thing works great. Flow rate is really good. Currently it has a 9 millimeter tip on it. The 9mm tip is very taxing on the compressor. I'm going to step it down to an 8mm tip. So this is an 8mm. It was supposed to be 70 millimeters long, but the uh, 3D printer got hung up on the tip. I was working on doing a time-lapse video. Still don't have it down yet, but anyway, I'll go ahead and put that time-lapse fail up so you guys can see. It, it wasn't looking pretty good until it caught the top of this nozzle and just knocked it right off the printing bed. But anyhow, let me go ahead and pull this 9mm tip out and we'll replace it with the 8. One thing that's very important, uh, if you guys are going to use this 3D printed nozzle, there's an O-ring that you have to get. I currently have it inside there. I'll go ahead and take it apart and provide you the measurements of that O-ring in the description. What I plan to do, guys, is I'll put this... Uh, STL file up on uh, my Shopify store and if you guys are interested in trying it out you can use it. It's been very robust so far 
it's gone through about a week of blasting garnet and very aggressive garnet, 36 grit. It doesn't have any problems, and the beauty of it is that you have these hose attachments that you can use. So these don't leak. You can swap out the gun real quick if you need to. Adjust the angle if the angle's not right for you. Those are a couple of things that I really like about it. Let's go ahead and load this guy in here. Here we are with the cleaned up plates. The baffles are all clean. Now the next thing we got to do is load the 80 grit glass bead media in the vapor blast cabinet and remove all the <clears throat> contaminants from the top of this valve cover. Alright, let me go ahead and do that. I'm also going to tape up these machined areas here. I have the valve cover on top of a milk crate just to make it a little bit easier for me to handle. I'll be blasting only the top. I'm not going to be blasting the bottom. The bottom is pretty much done. After that, we'll rinse it off, switch out to the extra fine glass bead media again, and uh, polish Alright guys, it looks like the glass bead is not going to cut through this oxidation and paint. I'm going to have to switch over to some 80 grit garnet and the 80 grit garnet will cut through this. Then we'll just skip the glass bead altogether and go right from the 80 grit garnet to the uh, extra fine glass bead media. Alright, let me go ahead and swap out the media again and we'll uh, pick up where we left off. All right, guys, loaded up in the cabinet is some 80-grit garnet. Let's uh, start up the vacuum, and we'll see how the 80-grit garnet cuts through this. Alright guys, I'm going to pause the video here, the visibility is going to be real bad and this is going to take quite a while. I'll restart it once I get it all done. 
Next up is going to be the 80 grit glass bead media. That's to polish up these parts. They've already been blasted with the 36 grit media. So now we're just moving up to the finer and finer media so we get this thing looking good. In the end, what we're going to do is probably paint that valve cover. It had a lot of heavy pitting. I'll show you guys in the video as soon as I get this part done. Next up is going to be extra fine glass bead media, again blasting at 50 psi.
vapor blasted the valve cover with 36 grit garnet to remove all the oxidation. This valve cover was really bad. There was a lot of pitting, a lot of oxidation. The initial plan was to polish it, similar to the valve cover that we did for the Toyota Yaris, but the pitting is really severe and bad. Let me show you guys how bad the pitting is. So you can see that e even after vapor blasting with the 36 grit garnet, the pitting is just really bad. And um, I went ahead and tried to polish a little spot, but the, the, the pitting just is so bad that I think what we're going to do is we're going to paint the valve cover with a wrinkle paint. The underneath side came out great. That part's all ready to go. We just need to put the plates back in the bottom, silicone them, screw them back in, and that part will be done. But the top part, we're going to go ahead and uh, paint with a VHT black wrinkle paint. What we've done also is fill in the recessed part of the Mazda dual overhead cam 16 valve lettering with some plumber's putty. And then I went back over with some sandpaper to clean off that plumber's putty and then uh, went over it with some acetone. So that hopefully our surface will, uh, the paint will adhere to this surface. We're going to go ahead and paint it now. And then once it's all dry, I'll update you guys on what it looks like. This is what we're going to be using the paint with. So we got some VHT Wrinkle Plus. It's a high temperature valve cover paint. The valve cover is already uh, prepped and ready to go. Mask off any surface that you don't want paint on. I would also recommend putting some tape or something inside the threads of the screws. That way you don't have any problems re-threading any of your screws. And uh, this valve cover also has a Kind of like a half moon section over here. Make sure you cover that up. That way you're not getting paint underneath that part. This uh, paint is nasty, so make sure you wear some PPE, which would include a respirator and something to protect your face, your hands. I would recommend long sleeve shirt. The instruction tells you to do three coats in uh, different directions, uh, up, and down and then side to side and then diagonal i've read online and seen a few other videos that recommend doing four coats we're going to go with the four coats i have done three coats in the past with this and noticed that it was not enough it really should have been four coats so let's try it out with four coats see how it goes it's a nice warm day out right now it's about 90 degrees i think that's a perfect temperature no humidity we haven't had any rain here in the last couple of weeks all right, guys, so this is the first coat done. You want to make sure that it's heavy and that it's all wet but not running. Wait about five minutes in between coats and then hit it again with another coat. Now, second coat out of the way. Let's keep it wet. Third coat is in the bag. Got about another minute left before hitting it with the fourth coat. Make sure it's, it's heavy but not running. Keep it looking real glossy because it's the, the wet, slow, heavy coats that cause it to wrinkle. If you see a spot that looks like it's dry, it's not going to wrinkle there. Super excited with the way the valve cover came out. So this is after four coats of the wrinkle paint. And by the fourth coat, we had a good amount of visible orange peel on the painted surface. And uh, that's what you want it to look like. If you have any areas that don't have that orange peel look to it, it's probably not going to wrinkle properly. But let me bring this thing in close so you guys can see. So as I came out, you see you got the, the wrinkles just everywhere. Came out real nice. And even, even the underside came out really well. So here's the, uh, the underside of it. The only thing left to do now, guys, is to put the baffles back in. Uh, they're all cleaned up and everything. All I'm going to do is simply silicone along these edges here using some RTV sealant. And then place the baffles back on and just uh, put the screws back in. This is another area that's going to get the baffle. 
put the screws back in, another baffle over here, the screws, and then that's it. We should be good to go. Um, I'm super excited. I think uh, it, it turned out great. I know that the owner of the car is going to be very pleased with it. What we're going to do with these parts up here is I'm just going to treat them with some VHT caliper paint in clear. So we're going to leave the same polished aluminum look, uh, but treat them so that they don't oxidize. Same thing with all the heads of the bolts that need to go into these uh, spaces. So we'll go ahead and put that together. I'll go ahead and give you guys one last uh, look at it once we finish putting the baffles on and screwing them down and then shoot a video of the finished valve cover on the Miata. Guys, I were able to do these this uh, recessed lettering is I filled prior to painting it with the wrinkle paint we filled in these debossed areas with some uh, plumber's putty and then painted over it and after the paint had dried we went back with an exacto knife and cut uh, along the edges of these letters and then dug out the paint and plumber's putty from from inside we weren't sure how this was going to turn out but i think it looks pretty good but i'm happy with it i think it looks really good it gives it a little bit more pop than just wrinkle painting in those recessed areas Here's the RTV that I'm going to be using, some JB Weld Ultimate Black, 100% silicone, gasket maker, and sealant. These are our other two parts. All right, so this is what it should look like when it's all put together on the inside. Next thing will be to flip it over and mount the hardware on top. So you can torque all those down, 69 inch pounds. Uh, this one, we just uh, snugged it down. It's not a very long bolt. 69 inch pounds also for these. This one, we just snugged it down. Um, didn't, didn't reach 69 inch pounds on that one. Gasket's on. Next thing is putting it in the car. All right, guys, you want to make sure before you put the valve cover on that you get some silicone in these edges here. So uh, where, where the cam caps go, you want to get some silicone on all those little edges there. And then there's uh, one back here, too. All right, so that way when you put, put it down in that corner, it'll spread out and you won't have any, any leaking from there. Make sure your surfaces are all clean. So we went around all these surfaces, made sure they were all clean. And if you got to use any kind of a scraper, they make some plastic razor blades that you can use to remove any uh, leftover silicone from a previous job. Okay, guys, there it is all finished. So that's how it came out. I think it came out great. The owner is very happy. If you guys like the content I'm putting out, make sure to... Subscribe to the channel, turn on your notification bells. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Leave me some comments, guys. Love to hear the comments. Till next time, God bless.